Well, welcome to another Cutting Edge. Uh, I'm uh, Omar Neal, uh, one of the hosts of this great show. Uh, this show has been going on now uh, for uh, a long time. It's been brought to you in part by the School of Public Health at uh, the University of Maryland. And of course, uh, we uh, discuss all things COVID-19 health and wellness and beyond. Let, let me let me suggest that you just buckle your seatbelt. You know we're about to approach um, the election that's going to be on the 8th of November. Write it down, 8th of November. And we wanted to convene a group of people to have us unpack the importance, the gravity of this moment coming up on uh, on this election cycle. And, and, and we've entitled it Vote and Remove All Doubt, uh, Saving Democracy, the Fierce Urgency of Now. You see, if what we've found is that if elections are close, they normally are contested, uh, particularly if they are close enough, they, they are automatic recounts, right? So, but in, in a situation where of hyper-partisanship, right, close elections can very well dismantle this notion of democracy when everybody questions whether or not the the winner is legitimate. And so we wanted to to have this conversation about the importance of saving our democracy. Uh, we have uh, uh, my lawyer, uh, Valerie Davis. She's the founder and uh, project manager for Elevate Her, Inc. Uh, we have another uh, and she's backed by popular demand. I just want you all to know this. Uh, the staff, uh, the, the, uh, the, the cutting edge team absolutely adore uh, Valerie Davis. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Terry Ann Scott back with us. Uh, she's an amazing uh, person. Uh, she's the director of the Institute for Common Power. Uh, she's uh, shifted gears uh, since uh, she was last with us. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. And uh, co of course, again, backed by popular demand. And then we have Dean Adrian Wing, who is the Associate Dean of International and Comparative Law Programs at the University of Iowa College of Law. And uh, again, she's been with us. Uh, we consider everybody you see part of our family. And so I can't wait to, to get uh, uh, in this, into this conversation with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dean Wing. And new to uh, the cutting edge, but not new to me or the people that I know, is Dr. Fred Prim Jr. He's the executive director of Alabama Alliance of Black Schools Educators. Uh, that's in Alabama. So, you know, I'm, I'm always bringing the Alabama flavor uh, in uh, to, uh, to, to sweeten up uh, whatever we're doing. And spice it up, right? Alabama's got spice. All right, so, uh, you know, I don't do this by myself. Uh, this is uh, my co-host. Uh, we call him uh, Dr. T amongst these parts. He's a brother from another mother. Dr. Stephen B. Thomas is a professor of the University of Maryland School of Public Health and director of the Center for Health Equity right there at the University of Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my co-host, and my friend, Dr. Stephen B. Thomas. Hey, Dr. T, how you doing? Hey, Mayor, it's always good to be with you. And, you know, I was just looking back at that promo photo we have and realizing, where did all this come from? <laughs> now, I, I stopped shaving when the pandemic started. Right. And then I came out of a room, someone said, hey, Dr. T, you got something on? And I realized <laughs> that gray hair is coming out everywhere. So I'm gonna have to do a before and after the pandemic. We have been in a battle, my friend. Absolutely. And we're still in it. Right. And right. Uh, we got a ways to go, but I have hope. Uh, we brought people together last night around a, a uh, human-centered design session. And many of the audience uh, that have been on this show, been watching this show, our barbers and stylists were part of it. And, you know, you've said something that came true last night, and that was make your friends before you need them. In a very short period of time, we need to put the call out. We had 25 people in the Hollywood squares last night. And it was an amazing demonstration of what we have started. We have gone from moment to movement. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I'm so appreciative. And thank you, Dr. T, for um, 
the latitude uh, that is uh, granted us here on the cutting edge. You know, we obviously are affiliated with the university, but I, I don't feel any constraints uh, about sharing truth on in this platform. And and I don't want, and, and I'm sure that our guests don't, because we only get guests that's comfortable with themselves. Um, and But to be able to be at the cutting edge of critical issues and, and oftentimes uh, controversial or challenging issues or issues that are uncomfortable for many people to discuss, uh, we uh, do it uh, without reservation or equivocation. So I just wanted to start the show out by saying thank you, my brother. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it because we have to learn the fact that we're not going to agree on everything, but we don't have to be disagreeable. Absolutely. And we've modeled that here and we've actually helped people go back to the other tables they sit at and have these contentious conversations that uh, hopefully uh, help people uh, grow. We're not going to get out of this unless we talk to one another. Absolutely. And we're definitely not going to get out of this unless we vote. <laughs> That's what tonight's about, right? And remove all doubt. Remove well, we all doubt. Talk, we're going to talk about <laughs> voting today. But you know, you and I don't do this by ourselves, right? Mm -mm. So let's let's uh, introduce the scene, be, uh, the team behind the scene. Because uh, without them, we'd be talking just to each other. Right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we could do that uh, on the phone. <laughs> absolutely, uh, we 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 got an, an extraordinary team uh, headed up by our uh, technical director Meg Jordan. She's assisted by Maggie Daly. Saria Khan is our social media uh, and and uh, our coordinator. Uh, we have uh, Elijah Pugh Jr., sound designer. Uh, so the the music that you hear as we introduce the show and as we do our intro and our outro uh, is designed specifically for the Cutting Edge show by Elijah Pugh Jr. So we are we have uh, tailored stuff going on with us here. So the music we're, we're, you keep rocking to every week. Absolutely. Do every week, huh? Ed Bob <laughs> all the time. Man. You, know, you know, you know, let, let me tell you this. People can catch us everywhere, man. We we are on uh, all of your social media platforms. You can catch us on Facebook, uh, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and more. Don't make make sure that you uh like, uh, share, and just subscribe uh to all of stuff that we're doing. Uh, we also have a newsletter. Uh, that comes out each and every week. And it's an awesome newsletter. Uh, I'm getting all kinds of positive feedback uh, from people who are writing me and texting me and even calling me, telling me how much they are enjoying uh, the newsletter. Um, uh, you you know, uh, Mayor Lucinia Dunn, uh, Dr. Mm. D, uh, yeah. she called me the other day to tell me that she loves this newsletter. She's on, she's she subscribed and now she's she's getting the newsletter regularly. And so she she just called to say kudos. It's just an incredible newsletter. Nice. So so on the newsletter, you not only do you get information about everything COVID and, and health and wellness and beyond, but you also uh can get uh the uh previous shows, uh excerpts from the shows, vignettes that we do. Just, just healthy, good information about how to live uh, healthy lives, uh, and so just really good information. So make sure that you subscribe to our newsletter, and you can stay hooked in with us as we uh, continue to grow uh, on the cutting edge. Well, Doctor T, time for us to do this thing, man. You, you know, know what? And you know, we got to hit this too. Your health is your wealth. We need to get that across to people. Absolutely. Because I'm yep. seeing a whole lot of successful people at the height of their career, prematurely with a disease, prematurely passing away. Your health right. is your wealth. And right now it's in our hands. You know, um, man, I had two classmates to die in the last week. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it's hard. And then a first cousin passed oh, two, two weeks ago. And so, so death is just kind of, consume me. Uh, and so you are absolutely right. We do need to talk about, you know, taking care of ourselves with intentionality. That's, that's, that's something we need to do. And, and the, the issues we're doing with the, the, the diabetes and, and yes. particularly as it relates to the African-American community, which predominates in the area of diabetes. Right. 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 And uh, so we, we really need to work on, on that because there, it is something you can do. You know, Absolutely. you know, your lifestyle, 
diet, you know, exercise, all of that has, you know, some impact and, and, and can contribute to your wellness or take away from your wellness by not doing it. So you know, we need to be mi mindful of that and, and really keep it out there in front of people so that they will be mindful of how they take care of themselves. Right. Absolutely. All right, man. Are you ready to, 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 to meet and, and hang out with our guests today and have a conversation? I got a, 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 a buckle my seatbelt come with a whole strap across the chest <laughs> <laughs> and I can and lock my feet in like you do on a bicycle. Cause yeah. we're going to, this is an amazing moment in history that we're in. Right. I want people to realize right. that right. history is being written right now, right now. Uh, let's 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 bring up Dr. Scott uh, first. Um, Dr. Terry Ann Scott, she's the director of the Institute for Common Power. We 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 uh, met uh, in uh, in Montgomery. She was doing some work in Selma. Dr. Lafayette introduced mm -hmm. me to mm -hmm. Dr. Terry Ann Scott, um, and the moment I met Dr. Scott, I knew something special about her. Uh, she she moved from from the uh, from her uh, older position. She was the chair of the Department of, he of History at Hook College uh, in Maryland, mm -hmm. and uh, she's an author. Her latest uh, book uh, entitled "In Lynching and Leisure: uh, Race and the Transformation of Mob Violence in Texas," and of course, uh, we are so excited about her uh, as she begins to un. Uh, expose uh, the many issues that undergird uh, this this uh, demolition of uh, of democracy in our country and lynching is one of them well, you know mm -hmm. with the with the Emmett Till uh, movie coming out uh, people are now revisiting that and so apropos um, would be the word for what Dr. Scott is doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Terry Ann Scott, let's uh, join me and uh, let's give us some snaps as we bring them. <laughs> Come on up. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate absolute, that. Absolutely, Dr. <laughs> Scott. Thank you so much. Thank you for that smile too. You know, we always talk, talk about you know, you know, smiling and 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 being being present and pleasant mm -hmm. is so very important. That's what we give life. We give people life just through the life that we live, right? And mm -hmm. uh, and and you exude life. And so we are oh, so appreciative thank you. Uh, to have you here. Uh, what, what's, what's going on with you? What you doing? What's up? <laughs> yeah, th well, thank you for having me in that incredible introduction. That's, that's lovely. Thank you for what you all are doing too. And the uh, urgency of this program here and voting. I'll point out very quickly, you just mentioned my book. Lynching was, in fact, one of the things that was used to stop Black people from voting and organizing voters. Mm -hmm. And so now we have different voter suppression measures that are in place. So you noted that I was a professor of U.S. history and African-American history and chair of the history department and associate professor. I decided to resign from that position. There are several professors on this call and people recognize what a choice that is. I made that choice to leave what some people call the tenure track lottery, because I believe it's one in five of those of us with a PhD actually ever get access to a tenure track position. And it's even lower for people of color and women of color. And so I decided to do that because the Institute for Common Power, which was launched in June and is uh, the educational branch of Common Power, we focus on these issues. We focus on voting justice and we push education to make people move to action. And we do that in a variety of ways. We just returned actually from seeing your good friend, Dr. Lafayette in Tuskegee two weeks ago with a group mm -hmm. of K through 12 educators that we gave scholarships to from the Institute so that they could go with us through Georgia and Alabama and learn the long history, not just of the modern civil rights movement, but of African-American history in general and the importance of voting. So that's what I am doing now, not just casting the vote, organizing voters, and having people understand that every single aspect of our lives is tied to voting, from healthcare to living wages to decent housing to affordable education, all of it. You know, wow. Mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. I, 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 a couple of weeks ago, I was on a civil rights tour, and probably uh, Dr. Scott in some of the same areas that you took those educators, and I, and one of those stops was the was the museum of of the lynching and I, right. I just want to say that when you when you walk in there 
you cannot help but be sobered. And as a black man, I'm walking through there and seeing all these men's names, Texas, Texas, Texas was mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. My father grew up in one of those small Texas towns. Now I know why he wanted to get out of there. Mm -hmm. But here's my question to you. The mayor opened with your smile, with mm -hmm. your energy, your joy. And yet we're talking about even the title of your book is something so painful. Mm -hmm. Some people turn away from those things. Mm -hmm. How do you turn to them and keep your spirit up? You know, because I know that this is what I'm supposed to do. Since I was 15 years old, I grew up outside of um, Chicago. Before that, I was called the N-word and Blackie and all kinds of things growing up. And I always decided that I had decided at a young age that if I could somehow teach people about this history, teach them about African-American history, about the broader history that is our collective history, then I can work to dismantle that kind of racism and structural inequality. And I, I've stuck to that. And so is it easy? No. Are there moments where I just want to sit down and watch a cartoon with my daughters? Absolutely. And I do. And I find joy in that. But I also know that for me, this is a path that I have been placed on for a reason. And so I turn to it because as my husband said to me once, if you don't tell them, they'll never know. And that goes for every single one of us. And I think we, that's why all of us are here and do the work that we do, because mm -hmm. we know that somebody has to do it. And we see if we see the impact that it makes, if people like Dr. Lafayette could get up and face what they face, then there is nothing that we can't do. We have no complaints to lodge. Good. Thank you, you know, so she much. mentioned you in that powerful. <laughs> you, she mentioned Dr. Lafayette, and I hope I don't get uh, put in jail for bootlegging. But you know, I cut his hair. I'm, I'm his. I'm his personal barber. <laughs> and then, and I cut his hair yesterday. So, oh. <laughs> so, so I just want you all to know that, right? You right? know, that's a, that's really a gift, as we've heard from our stylists. When you when you give that kind of care to someone. Yeah, it's very healing. I didn't know you had that skill, Mayor. Oh yeah, that's. I might I let you work I used on to do that. Well, you, you know, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> Zip. That's it. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor Scott. We we do appreciate you. Bring up our next guest. You know, I um, I uh, I call her my lawyer. Uh, she she distinguished uh, at one time the attorney from lawyer, and and she. She illuminated and educated me on another level, but it's it's her passion. Uh, she's the founder of and project manager of Elevate Her Inc. And uh, just you know her 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 energy around articulating her truth with the courage and the conviction of a, of a warrior just exudes from her spirit. Uh, she is witty uh, and serious. At the same time, uh, you know, she has been on the show before, so we consider her one of our own, just <laughs> as with Dr. Scott. She's she's uh, uh, they, they say uh, I call Dr. Uh, T uh, a, a, a brother from another mother. Well, she's a sister from another mister. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. <laughs> Davis. My lawyer. Come on, let's snap her up. <laughs> Thank you. Snap her up, Dr. Scott. Snap her up. Absolutely. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm over here in the amen corner for um Dr. Terry, because I feel <laughs> like I could have I could have been talking and she could have been saying the words because we're on the same page, the same wavelength, same hymnal. <laughs> on the same pew. I love it. Absolutely. You know, all, all the good choirs, I know they sometimes say you're talking to the choir. All the good choirs practice. Yeah. <laughs> That's Absolutely. what we're doing here. Yes. Absolutely. Well, how you doing? How you been? Somebody you... asked me that today. And let me tell you something. My team, um, of the leaders on my team, we have four right now that are really leading this, this project that we have called the Black Voter Guide Project in the D.C. Mm -hmm. area. Got a leader of Prince George's um, County team. Uh, her dad's in the hospital. We got a leader on her team is another team leader. Her mom is having surgery tomorrow. And my mother is in the hospital right now and they don't know wow. what's wrong with her. So how I'm doing is I'm doing. Right. Right. Because my why doesn't change, even if my circumstances change. And my why is my 15 year old who is overcoming and, and uh, persevering despite 
the first time experiencing clinical depression coming out of COVID um, in the 11th grade. You know what 11th grade is like, anybody? Mm -hmm. SAT, mm -hmm. PSAT, ABC, one, two, three, oh. Yeah. Um, still pursuing that A average that she's always had and a year in advance, an advanced learner. Wow. And my job is to leave her in a better world than the one she was born into. And it's slipping. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm on the, I'm, I'm texting my sisters about, you know, what are we going to do about the blood thinner? And should we d go down on the number of milligrams? And I'm taking calls from, I might not be able to do this work because I got to go to North Carolina, take care of my dad. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. So I am carrying, I hate the gun analogy. So somebody give me another one, but bear with me. We have to carry a shotgun. Mm -hmm. We are not single issue people. We can't walk around with a rifle because there's no one target. People, I know everybody on this call, everybody on the panel, right? Have you heard people tell you you do too much? You do too much. I mean, I just don't know why you don't focus. You know, people will understand you better if you focus on one thing. Get somewhere with that. Next, when you show up, when you wake up as a black woman one day, then we'll talk. So here's my thing. I thought about this theme when you all sent me this invitation and you know, you play at your own risk. I said, I would love to know who's in the room tonight. So if you're on these other channels and Meg and all your team has some kind of magic, they can actually get feedback. I want to know who's in the room tonight because it makes a difference if we're talking to people who are here because they haven't decided whether they want to vote or if we're really all voters and really we're here for something different. That matters. So I would love to know more about that. So I don't know. So Meg can do some person. magic back we, 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 that, you you, you, you should, now. We, on, your, wish, your wish is our command. I'm yeah, telling right. you, Alagazam. We can so do this. So here's the thing. The reason, in. the reason I want to know that is this, because the title of your, your theme for tonight, it said something about saving our democracy. Yes. Which begs the question, what is our democracy? Because mm. by fundamentally, we have people who define democracy differently. And mm. what, it, what it brought up to me is um, Frederick Douglass, what to a slave is your 4th of July? That's mm. right. It's the same concept. If we're not all on the same page, singing from the same hymn about what democracy is, we're all working on our own purpose, on our own view of what that thing is, right? And, and we are here in part because we've all decided we get that, you know, experts have died. There's no truth. And my truth about democracy is different than your truth about democracy. It undermines the rule of law. It undermines civil society. It undermines everything. And the best example that I can give to that that is relevant, we have this saying in, the, in our, in our uh, nonprofit that you need to be right now relevant every day when you show up. Okay. Yeah. And I was, on, I was listening on the radio, listening to a live recording or a recording of one of the Supreme Court justices that is currently hearing the challenges to affirmative action. Yes. And he said, I keep hearing a lot today, the word equity, equity, equity. And I just really don't know what that is. Wow. He's a Hold on. <laughs> you are a Supreme Court justice who will sit there for life or until you get ready to leave. You are hearing a case on affirmative action, and you are willing to say out loud for the world on a recording that you literally don't know what equity means. So before we can talk about what it is we wanna get done, we have to uh, define what it is. We think we know black people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I, I applaud people like you, Dr. Terry. I am not a teacher. That is not my role. It's not my ilk. That's not what I do. I do teach incidentally. <laughs> yes. Well, you and teach I, it now. Uh, you know, I just want you right. to know you you spit knowledge now, right? I am fire. I expect you to know. This is the United States of America. Google it. <laughs> hey, Val, let me say this. As I read your bio, your organization <laughs> was birthed. That's what you said. Birthed out of the pandemic. Birth. There are silver linings in this pandemic that we should lift up, elevate, amplify, and stand up, including this show and everything that's come afterwards, because the pandemic exposed the lie that's being told about our democracy. Now, we have fought, died. Come on. We, yeah, I, yeah. When I did that civil rights tour, I realized what our ancestors sacrificed for. That's the democracy. We've always been telling this nation in this grand experiment 
to become better. You know, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it, 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 it's incremental. But some of these giants are passing away, uh, Mayor. I've yeah. met some of them. And that next generation is what I'm concerned about, to keep the narrative, not forget. The museums are fine. We need more people to see those museums. But we're living that, we're living some of that tragedy right now, and it's getting more visible and more normative. So that's... Well, you you know we not had a democracy long. We, we really have a representative republic. We don't even have a democracy now, right? But just since 1965, with the passage of the Voters' Rights Act, that, that we have a semblance of democracy. Because if all people cannot participate in a process, there is no such thing as democracy. And I, we do know that definitions do matter. And uh, you know, you are entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. So we do know what the facts of what a democracy is, and we'll talk about that later on. Thank you so much, Val Davis, for 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 <laughs> for, 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 for putting it where the cows can get it, right? Right? Causing good right? trouble. Good causing, trouble. Causing good trouble. Yeah. Now bring up my next one now, because uh, you know, when we come when we come back, when, when we bring people. Uh, back, we bring them back by popular demand, Dean Adrian Wing, uh, who is Associate Dean for the International and Comparative Law Programs and Professor of, at the University of Iowa uh, School of Law, uh, College of Law. Let, let, me, let, me, let me say this, um, you know, Dr. T, uh, it was, it was uh, our colleague, uh, Royce Kennebrew, who, int- who called me and told me about Dean Wing. And man, he, you know, he was so flattering. I said, man, it's got to be hyperbole, right? You know, <laughs> then when I met him, I said, man, you under, you, you, you undersold her. <laughs> you know, she better than you said, you know, uh, she, uh, she's down in, in Texas. Now I'm not going to tell you where, cause she that bad, uh, but she down in Texas now doing some, some, some recruiting stuff and, and, and hanging out down there. But she's a person who truly understands the 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 complexities of what we're dealing with and ways to articulate them and put them linguistically ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming our dear friend the family member from the cutting edge dean adrian wing hey dean how you doing all right snap her up snap her up i'm doing fine i'm glad to be back on the show uh it's wonderful to be uh, to seeing many of you for the second or third time and to meet those of you i haven't met before absolutely so um you know i i have to admit i'm a little concerned well that that's not true i'm real concerned about where we are now and where i see us going um this notion uh uh that you can have um, an election and the outcomes become questionable even before they the outcomes, okay. right? As a political ploy to delegitimize your opponents okay. um, is at the cornerstone of moving away from a democracy to an autocracy. And, and is that hyperbolic of me to say that, Dean? No, it, it's it's even way worse. Uh, as my title indicates, uh, I do international law. I've been to over 100 countries. I just came from Luxembourg. I was in France and Italy this summer. I'm getting ready to go to the UK. In all of these countries, our allies are saying, doesn't look like your democracy is going to hold. Now, as we've indicated already, it's not a real democracy. Like we don't directly elect our president. And in other countries, they directly may directly elect a president or they have a prime minister, you know, that represents the, the majority party. But everywhere I went, they're like, it doesn't look like it's going to hold. And that what's happening in the U.S. is similar to what's happening in some other countries around the world in different continents where forces that are authoritarian, that are fascist, that are anti-democratic, they're communicating with each other. And they're on the same, uh, the same path, which is to undermine the forces that would like to have or bolster the democracies that they have. And there's nothing I could tell them. I certainly couldn't tell them, oh, no, 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 nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be fine. Uh, many of us are worried. Will there be literal physical violence um, that will make January 6th look like 
you know, it was a, it was a picnic. And then of course, having, uh, you know, the, the speaker's husband, Mr. Pelosi physically attacked in his house when they were looking for her, that's assassinations, right? There are people who are planning whether they be mentally ill or whether they're not mentally ill at all. They know exactly what they're doing, either type. These people, depending what happens with the election we're about to have, may use physical force in, you know, on a scale that maybe we haven't seen since the Civil War or maybe we've never seen. Hmm. And it's quite scary to me. Uh, I have seven children. Uh, my 19th grandchild is going to be born in a few days here in Texas. I've taught thousands of students in my 35 years as a professor. We here on this show, we, we have to be hopeful. We have to be optimistic. We have to, despite whatever horrors uh, that we are confronting, we have to have a positive attitude that we will not only survive, but that we will thrive as we're about to also see affirmative action be overturned by the current Supreme Court, which is going to do a whole nother thing next year. Uh, and none of us can even contemplate what that is. Hmm. So yeah. all of this is very scary, I think. You know, you know um, go, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Dr. I, I was just going to say, because I just love the photo that we use when you we introduce you. So I, I put my, my war gear on. <laughs> because, you know, we do have traditions in this country from 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 W.E.D. to Boyce. Mm -hmm. to Frederick Douglass, mm -hmm. you know, they all showed us a way, including Booker T. Washington. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to wear all those hats to get through this. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, I'm sure that yeah. those of you who've written these books recognize that we have been the leading edge of getting America to live up to that democratic dream. It has come mm -hmm. at, on our shoulders. So I, I'm just glad to see the fire in this group, mm -hmm. we're talking about powerful forces, but I'm also hearing that nobody is um, giving up. Nobody's giving up that I'm here and here. So I can't yeah. wait to see what this conversation is going to. Oh do. man, it's you see, it's firing up. They got the kindling going already, brother. You know, and and, and we do know that uh, Dr. <laughs> Scott has to leave us early, so we gonna we got to get her engaged. Let me mm -hmm. let me bring up uh, uh, Dr. Alf. Alf. We, 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 you know, uh, we got Royce Kenny Bruce going to be with us, but he's kind of now part of the team. So, so we, we can't call him no guest no more. When you, when you come over the house and eat three, four times, you become part of the family. We so, make clean up in the kitchen. <laughs> that's right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where you know, my... you go fix your old plate, man. Don't do that. Where's my invitation? Y'all eat? <laughs> Y'all ate and didn't invite me? You know, now you know better than that. What you mean? You, why are we going to do that? That's, that's, know. that's. That's sacrilegious. Did not did, did not invite you to the table. I'm you stay at the table. Well, you know, you always cooking up something. You know, we'll, you know. We'll, we'll reconnoitre on that later. Yeah, I know that's <laughs> right. You know, we 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 have our friends and we have our brothers. Um, uh, Dr. Fred Prim Jr., uh, who is the executive director of Alabama Alliance of Black School Educators. I met him uh, when he was a superintendent in Sumter County. Uh, Alabama, that's in Livingston. Uh, this brother uh, trained his entire staff on sensitizing them to uh, the humanity of, of the children, to focus on the importance of them and that all children can learn. He was the first, one of the first people that, that really, that I saw that, that didn't just use it in rhetoric, but he literally implemented programs to sensitize them to the humanity of the child and to get them to look at modalities of teaching that complemented the modalities of learning for the children. If you can't, if I can't learn the way you teach, then teach me the way I learn. There you go. And, and that's the that's his model uh, in life. Uh, he is uh, the the founder of of of, of the executive di and direct the executive director of this organization. Uh, so he's taken all of his knowledge as superintendents. He was the superintendent of Bessemer School. Brought me in to do training for them there. Uh, this brother has constantly evolved. And so now he's parlayed into bringing alliances and coalitions of teachers together and educators together to come up with new models of reaching people where they are. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my dear friend, 
none other than Fred Prim Jr. Hey, Dr. Prim, how you doing? Snap him up. Snap him up. Welcome, Dr. Hey, Prim. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, this is a dynamite cast here, so I'm like, wow. Uh, I just want to sit back and just eat a little bit. This <laughs> Hey man, you you make it full concrete. You already see Doc, uh, 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 Val Davis talking about you know food, and then you going and I hadn't eaten today, so y'all gonna mess me <laughs> up, man. But anyway, man, thank you so much for for the work you do, uh, for your commitment, for your steadfastness. Um, I've seen I've seen your work, man, and I appreciate that that commitment. Uh, I'm 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 I I have to say I'm officially afraid. Um, and you and I've talked about uh, the importance of having the right leadership because education and everything is influenced by politics. There is nothing that escapes the influence of politics. And, and so if you get the wrong people in office, they can alter what you do to the point that you cannot recognize it. Uh, is, is that hyperbole or, or, or am I kind of getting? No, somewhere? I think spot on, um, you know, I'm I'm a real uh, proponent of teaching civics, right? And you would be surprised that only nine states plus the, the District of Columbia, so 10, actually require school districts or states to teach civics. And so realistically, when Horace Mann created the common school movement, his whole idea was, was to make sure that civics was a, a critical part uh, of the school uh, experience so that people would be productive citizens. And so anything that's similar to civics, you see them trying to kick it out. So that's why you hear so much talk about uh, critical race theory because what you saw was that a lot of school districts are now starting to do a lot of equity training for their teachers. Um, they were also doing a lot of um, culturally relevant teaching for their scholars. And so they saw that the needle was starting to be pushed. So wow. they said, we're going to come up with a strategy because if we get to the point where we create these wonderful citizens, then guess what? All of this divisiveness, all of these different things that we use in our political arenas will be really null and void because now they've been um, trained in the right way, so to speak, through civics. Uh, in their educational process to help them. And so what we have is we have a battle and we understand uh, us folks that are really on the front line in education, we understand that we're really creating the next, not only the next politician or the next elected official, but we're also creating the next line of voters. And so it's our duty to stand on the wall and make sure that we do that. You know, Dr. Prim, you're reminding me, I, I, uh, it, it was an, um, I was coming out of the grocery store. The election is the following day. And, you know, you're having conversations. So a young 18 something, 19, 20 year olds uh, doing the checkout. And I said, and we had my little, I voted sign on. And we just started a conversation. And you know what the response was? When's the election? And I made a judgment about the person at the time. Like, what's wrong with her? But I'm listening to you, and it's really what happened to her. Mm -hmm. What happened to her in her education? What happened to her in her school? What happened to her that she doesn't know the elections tomorrow or who she may vote for? And you're suggesting or telling us this is by design. A am, I, am I far off here? You are exactly correct. There was a, um, a survey done by Pew Research and it's under 30 percent. I, I want to say maybe about 26 percent, but under 30 percent of all Americans that were surveyed actually knew the three branches of government. That is a sad commentary. So you can imagine if they don't know the very basics, then obviously they don't know how to go about registering the vote, the voting process, the electoral process. They have no clue if they don't even know the very basics. And so you're extremely um spot on is the fact that if we don't get to a point where we start to truly educate, and I mean on a consistent basis, we can't let off. We've got to continue to, long after they're gone, we've got to continue to hold their hand in this electoral process. And if we don't, 
then uh, as one of the panelists stated earlier, what you're going to see is our democracy will be lost. You know, you can't teach what you don't know and you can't lead where you don't go. Right. And uh, that's critically important. Uh, Mike, bring 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 Mike Dynamite Brown up. Uh, uh, Mike uh, uh, is uh, one of our wellness warriors. Uh, he is a uh, a, a staunch uh, uh, member and uh, supporter. He's a public health worker uh, in uh, the D.C. area. He's a, a master barber, you know, so uh, he's he, he's he's the real deal. Holy field. Mike, you had a, 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 a question. I, I definitely I have. It's not more so a question. It's more so of a, a perspective from my community. Um, of course, I can only speak on the things that I've been through and what I see every day. And uh, in our community, um, it's like they're looked over, but their vote is needed. Um, I believe if we could reach the people that really don't know if they're Democratic or Republican or don't care about an issue or, or this or that, we could probably get the vote in the direction that it needs to go with the people because there's a lot of people out here that counts us well, I'm saying for my community, they count. You mean us black not folk? You mean black you talking about? Let, let's be clear, okay? <laughs> be, be clear, because right, there may be some people black don't know you talk about. Okay, okay, black folk in the street, the brothers. Black folks in the street okay. is a vote. Okay, it's a vote. Uh, it's probably not the most common or wanted vote. Uh, I, I'm sure uh, most people who uh, brought their children up and uh, had a mother and father, or just a mother or father, and they brought their children up the best way they could and they're respectable. They know about the branches of government and stuff. It's a nation of people out there with the vote who have not a clue of the first uh, uh, um, legislative of, um, of, of voting or what or who to vote for. Right. And these are the people I see every day. They don't know if they're Democratic or Republican. You know, I've, I'm in like a little, I haven't voted yet. I'm going to, but you know, I'm still going through a little stuff with myself of where my vote should go. Um, you know, this is what I want you to do. Hold up. I want you to stay right there. I want to say something to Dr. Scott, because I do know you got three minutes and mm -hmm. I want to I want to bring you into the conversation. Stay where you are, Mike. You hanging out with us now. OK, because because okay. you make you make a salient point. And I think yeah. that 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 black people have been taken for granted um, and, and, and that they look at the people who do vote and don't look at the 70 percent of people who don't vote. And we need to figure out why they don't vote. And if we spent more time doing that, then maybe we wouldn't be so scared uh, uh, when the election time comes. Uh, uh, Dr. Doctor, uh, uh, Scott, you know, America is 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 kind of a cabal of, of contradictions. How can you be the land of the free and the home of the slave? Ooh, <laughs> Ooh. vicious. Ooh. And Dr. Scott, talk, talk to Mike. He's got people in his chair that need not guidance. It, it, they have a way of persuading. Yeah. They're powerful communicators. Talk to, talk to Donna, Mike. Thank you, Mike, for bringing up that really important issue and for, for being concerned about it and wanting to know how you can be a conduit to the community to create change. One of the things that I have found, because oftentimes people feel like, as you noted, Mayor Neal, the, our vote is taken for granted. Or why should I vote? I live in a state that is a different color than the vote that I'm going to give. I live in a, in a red state and I vote blue. So why does it matter? We have to emphasize to people the importance of local elections. We don't talk about it enough. Our sheriffs are elected by mm. us. And we know that it makes a difference who that sheriff is in that community for our communities. Our school board members are elected by us. And we know that if we have certain people like right here in Frederick County, where I am in Maryland, there's a contingency that's trying to run who is going to remove a course that is on African-American studies that just started in the schools this year. It's an elective. You don't even have to take it. But it works on the nerves so much of this slate of candidates that they want it removed from the school. And what else we know about local elections is so frequently they are determined by one or two or 10 votes. Wow. And so when somebody says your vote doesn't matter, you point to those elections and say that city council person who sits right now in, I think it's Ohio, won by just a few votes. B. Wynn, 
who is running in Georgia, won her primary by 30 votes. Everybody's vote matters. And people need to understand the importance of what's happening right here in their local community and how it impacts either their own children or their nieces or their nephews or their godchildren or their own families themselves. We're in a barbershop. We're in a barbershop. We could see 1,500, 1,000 to 1,500 people a week. It's voting time. Mm. I haven't seen one politician come and say mm. anything or what they're going to do or what they can do in our community for our vote. Mm -hmm. They don't come, but they say you're not voting. We don't have an education of who you are, what you stand for, what politics is. Uh, it, are you serving my cause? Uh, are you doing something mm -hmm. for me that's going to directly benefit me? We, we're we definitely a transaction community. Uh, mm -hmm. We do something for you, we want it back. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you say something, we expect you to do it. That's on any level of, of just being from where I'm from. If you say something, we expect you to do it. You say yeah. you want to by, you say you're gonna give me a book, for instance, and you don't give me the book. You are looked at as, you know, you're a liar mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing right now, and I'll just say this quickly. I know I I have to go. I'm actually getting uh having a meeting and then getting on a plane headed to Arizona with my college age <laughs> daughter in the morning to go knock on doors to encourage Safe people travels. to vote. So thank you. But Mike, I'm hearing from you. Absolutely. The politicians themselves also need to get out into the community and don't underestimate the value that you also have to, to run for office. I can hear it with your passion. Uh -oh. I can see that, it that's the president already, man. Uh, you, hold up, Doc, <laughs> Dr. Scott. That's president uh, uh, Mike Dynamite Brown, right? Oh, oh Lord. So <laughs> bad. He's already the president. <laughs> or even the library <laughs> board. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, don't put him in no right. library. I put it at president, man. That's right. where he is, right? <laughs> right, but we shouldn't underestimate our own power, to be honest. That's right. Hey, so, hey, Dr. Right. So Terry you. Ann Scott, love you so much, Snap Her Up. And thank we you. love you, you so all. much uh, to the thank next time. Thank you for time, doing okay? this important show. Oh, Absolutely. Safe, a safe travels you. for you. Okay. All right. Good, good. Uh, Mike, Mike, stay there, stay there. I want you. I want Mike to stay here. Bring up Russ Kennebrew uh, with us. Uh, Russ Kennebrew is um, he? He's got he's got to be one of the, one of the the team members now. He he came he came to eat so much now. We said he he don't even <laughs> knock on the door no more. He come he in and he go straight to the kitchen. Go straight <laughs> to the refrigerator. Which they say refrigerator. <laughs> he got to clear his own plate. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, he he's a he's a former congressional candidate. Uh, he is uh, an author. New book came out, uh, The uh, Ghetto Grave Dodger. And uh, just just a powerful brother. Uh, uh, you know, you, you know, you we, we're hearing we're hearing this man. And, and I'm seeing where people are really, really, as, as Dean Wing said, that the democracy is in this country. We thought we were like the 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 shining. Uh, uh, city on the hill for democracy. That's we were right. the citadel of democracy, and 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 people around the world are looking at us like like. Well, if if you are the epitome of democracy, then democracy doesn't have a chance anywhere. Is 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 that hyperbolic? You're no, you you need to you, 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 unmute yourself. Uh, absolutely not. Uh, I was just on the call with a friend of mine from the UK, uh, and she was talking to me about the issues that they have. But they said, Royce, we we're having so many problems. We, we can't talk about you as much anymore. Right. And then another one of my friends is is Brazilian. And you see what is occurring down in Brazil with a South American Trump like figure. Um, who has his supporters in the streets in 20, uh, no, 70 different Brazilian cities with truckers blocking the roadways. So no, it's not hyperbolic. We are looked at as a problem democracy that may not stand. Um, but uh, when we hear from um, uh, Dean Wing and always good to see uh, my former professor online, um, we, we, we know that there's, there's problem brewing, not just in our country, but all over the world. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and you know, I don't feel, and, uh, Dean Wing, I want you to help me out with this. I don't feel the sense of, I don't feel that people 
have that desperation that when you're dying, when something that's valuable for you is dying, I don't, I feel we're too, in, we're intellectualizing it and we don't have that passion that, because, because voting is emotional and, and I don't feel, I don't feel the emotion. I feel, I don't feel the energy based on what the consequences that each of you have alluded to. Uh, am I wrong for saying that? No, I think you're right. But I think people will feel a lot of emotion if after the election, it doesn't come out the way they assumed it would. And they realized how much we have lost and how much more there is to lose in 2024 when there's a presidential uh, election and who will be running, who will be the two main candidates, who will be the vice presidential candidates and and, and like you say, it's kind of almost like we're in a little bubble uh, and, and, and facing consequences that a lot of people in the rest of the world are looking at how dire these consequences will be for the United States. But many of us internally may or may not even be uh, thinking that way. Mm, that's powerful. Uh, Mayor, w w w let's find out what pulse beat we have out there. Let's find out if there's that yeah. urgency you're talking about out there. Let's let's do this. Let's 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 uh, 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 take the pulse uh, uh, with the word cloud. Uh, Doctor T, tee it up. So, think of a word that best describes Doctor Prim. How you're feeling right now at this moment? We're still in a pandemic, and write that word right there in the chat for those of you out there in Facebook land, social media. Write the word in the Q and A box. The team behind the scenes will build a cloud, and then put as many words one after another that you can think of for the next 60 seconds as we continue this conversation. Just put them in. Just keep those words coming. You know, and, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dr. Well, I, I was just saying, uh, uh, thinking back on the civil rights tour, and, and, and I mean, there's there, there are monuments, uh, statues, Mayor, and you know this, mm -hmm. of the vicious dogs mm -hmm. that were attacking people. They are in... There are monuments and those dogs are there. So you see what the people went through. We're not seeing that today. Yes, we are. And Look at Arizona. They, they got people with guns, intimidating people with, 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 with vest on, with, with, with uh, ammunition vest on, right? That's right? because- I mean, they still doing it. I mean, 9-11. Dr. Dean Wing just talked about uh, uh, Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband. Right. January, uh, January 6th. What's, what's different? <laughs> Happening all around us. And yet we're in these bubbles because every now and then I'll end up on a channel that minimizes all the things you just described, including the, the elder abuse on Mr. Pelosi, trivializing it. Uh, people who know better, but have a big microphone. So you, this you, is go go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. I want you to say uh, that because uh, because because Booker D. Washington said this, Dr. T. He said, a lie remains a lie, no matter no matter how many people tell it. <laughs> the lie does not become the truth, no matter how many people tell it or how many people believe it. The truth <laughs> is the truth, and we need to be able to distinguish what is a lie. And what is the truth? And the people have to be courageous enough to tell the truth when they know it. Because once you know, you owe. But Mary, you in the business of the media and this, this, and then that, as if they're equal, this, and then that, and people are confused. And if we don't have the civic education out there, Dr. Prim and, and Dr. Kennebrew and all the rest of you, folk don't have a, 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 a language to push back. We're so vulnerable. Hold up, hold up, Dr. T. You know, Val, help me out. <laughs> people know, they know that they, if, if you don't know people <laughs> lying about something, then you go to court 60 times and you get 60 different judges to tell you that that's a lie and you still believe it's the truth. Something wrong with you. Val, is, is that what, tell me, help me out with this now. I'm I, I sorry, I'm sorry. I cannot co-sign on that view. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing, the, 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 in that scenario you just put there, the word that mattered most, the phrase was you went to court. Court mm -hmm. is a system. If your truth exists 
in your world because it's truth and you enter someone else's system and they get to decide what's truth oh, wow. on Monday okay. or Tuesday or Friday or before the moon is full and they're standing on one leg, that's truth. And I, I wanna I wanna address and, and tie that to what Mr. Brown said. This idea of if I give, I expect you to give that sort of back and forth transaction, that mutually beneficial thing was never the deal with black folks. I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled as to why we continue to expect that when we should have been trained to know that was never the deal. Please give us your bodies, your children, your ability to marry, your language, your culture, give us your everything and you'll get nothing back but the ability to keep working for us. It doesn't, that's never the deal. They don't come, politicians, people who need your vote only come for two things. If you got money or you have power and influence. And part of the reason why we are an afterthought, we're a footnote, we're a, yeah, come on, as, as, as Black communities, plural, because we're not a monolith, is because we don't have those two sources of power. We don't. It's pity pat. That's what we're playing. They, that's what they're playing with us. It's pity pat, right? And the way that you can tell is this. Look at your election season, wherever you are. I don't know where you are, Mr. Brown. Are you in the DMV? Because I'm going I'm to answer your other question about yeah. figuring out who to vote for. Go, go on. I'm, I'm Mike. I'm, 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 hold, hold, hold up a second, Val. Unmike, Mike. Mike. <laughs> I did. Right. So the way, that you can, the way you can tell is this. Look to see if any Black-led organization was asked for an endorsement by any candidate. I'll give you a moment to think about it. Do, 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 do. You can stop now because I don't even know who's I don't even know who's running. To, right. To but when you go to the when you go to the polls or you see these things that you get in the mail, they'll have the I'm the Apple candidate from the teachers union and I'm the so and so from the you know mechanics union. I'm the so and so. If you don't get asked to endorse, it's because you have no power. And many of us are in 501c3 organizations, nonprofits who are muzzled in this fight. You don't have any votes because you don't show up. And then you don't have any money. So that's the way you can tell whether you're, they're not coming to give you anything. Here's the thing, shift the paradigm, be in charge of the transaction. The way that we need, to, we don't go to them saying, if I'm not giving you your vote until you come to me, no. We went with the Black Voter Guide Project and we went to communities. Black folks, ours. And we said, if you could ask politicians one thing, what would it be? And we did it in Prince George's County, Montgomery County, Washington, D.C. And we put those questions together. We used Stacey Abrams' book, Lead from the wow. Outside, as a primer. Nice. We read through it for nine months, chapter by chapter. I say we, Black people and being well while Black around the world, Jamaica, UK, Florida, New York, California, Mexico. To figure out from somebody who's done it, how do you amass power when you're on power when you're outside? We took those questions, we put them in our own voter guide, and we call it the Black Voter Guide. We unapologetically ask questions from the Black community. Go to beingwellwhileblack.org, Michael. Beingwellwhileblack.org. You can get a free guide where we ask every politician who wanted our vote from in the state of Maryland, 421 candidates. Prince George's County, 58 candidates. Montgomery County, 35 candidates. Washington, D.C., 40 candidates for the general election. No money, no paid staff, all volunteers, all Black females except for one brother, bless his heart. And we asked <laughs> them a smart everything brother from too. Right, gun <laughs> control, reproductive rights, closing the so-called achievement gap everything, a uh, thriving wage. So you can go to that guide and see one who bothered to answer. What was that guide so, again? It's called beingwellwhileblack.org. We'll put it in the chat. I'll put it in yeah. the chat. And I'm just going to close because I don't want to take up all the air in the room, but I'm going to tell you what one politician said. Listen closely. This is a state of Maryland candidate who wants your vote if you're in Maryland. Revoke sanctuary status in Maryland and send all the illegal aliens packing. They steal jobs and businesses from minority owners and compete unfairly. It is inexplicable to me that Democrats, even Black Democrats, so enthusiastically support illegals at the expense of the Black community. You're only going to find that in the Black Voter Guide. One, because we didn't give them a word count. We said, talk yourself in and out of a vote. Number two, <laughs> we, we gave them data. 
So for every question we said, you don't know about, we'll assume you know nothing about black people. Click on this link and in every category, get educated before you answer. We will not limit your word count. And we ask them for the primary and the general election. So if you want to be able to figure it out, bring the guide into the barbershop every day okay. between November 8th. Now All right. Now we have a strategy. That's, that, that's powerful. Oh, the, the other thing is, go go ahead, Mike. Say, 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 I was just saying, say, yeah. I, I will, because our community feels like uh, the politician times come uh, and, and it's time for them to eat the banana pudding untouched. They get the scoop, the scoop on their plate. And once their plate is full, the rest can go in the trash. That's how we feel, we're the trash. But we have to take back what we want. We don't come with an agenda. We don't, we, if I would ask people, everybody on this call, what is it that you, what is your vision for black people in your community? Can you give it to me in 60 seconds or less? I want them to prosper. Okay, what does that mean? The, yeah. Uh, to, to win, to be able to pay your bills without doing illegal stuff, to, to love one another. Okay, Stop so to pay my bills without doing illegal stuff, what, do, what needs to happen? What does a politician need to do to make that happen? Now we're into the workshop we need to have and move this whole agenda forward. You got, you, you we got to break it down because resources. I've been told and, and by we, resources we, 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 and it starts we, from schools. You got to like, break it down. You, you know, interestingly enough, uh, that's what politics is about is, is, is the who, when, where gets resources, right? Who, who gets resources, when, where, how they get resources. The, the power is the ability to, to supply or withdraw needed resources. So if you, if you don't have any resources, you don't have power, right? And so when we entrust politicians with the distribution of resources we entrust with them or or they or our resources then we need to we need to be able to influence them and right now the black community has very little to no influence over the political process and although we are essential to it right that we we we're, we're being used like puns let's let's go to the word cloud yeah, uh, let me see, take, let me see, let me let me take let me take a pulse <laughs> Boy, i got to get a pulse <laughs> but you know, Mayor, while the cloud's coming up, and, I, and I'm really interested with what Dr. Prim thinks when he sees this, uh, the, the larger the word, Dr. Prim, more people said that word, okay? The larger the word, more people said that word. Yeah. Now, what, know, do you, what do you see, uh, Dr. Prim? What do you see? Well, the, you know, I need my, 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 my real bifocals on, but... <laughs> But I see worried and concerned uh, as two of the, the larger words. And I'll be quite frank with you, worry was mine. Right. You know, you know, let me tell you something. I am worried, too. And I'm one of the most optimistic, you know, upbeat individuals that I know. And I am absolutely worried. I, I, I believe that people are willing to throw it all away. Right just to get their 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 uh their way it's it's like it's like being a a a political baby where if in my way or the highway if, you know it, if i take my ball and go home with it if 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 you don't let me play the way i want to play right it's that kind of thing and and i'm worried i'm worried for america i am worried for america because I don't know whether or not we understand, as Dr. Wing, as, as Dean Wing has said, we understand the gravity of what's taking place and what could very well take place just Tuesday. The day is Thursday, right? Tuesday. Uh, uh, Dean is, Wing. Go ahead, Dean. Listen, go, listen. Go, we, go ahead, Dr. T. We've seen the overturning of a right to protect women's right to choose. We've seen it overturned. Now, if that's not enough, Dean Wing, what do you see in this word cloud? Unmute yourself, Dean Wing. Unmute, unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I'm looking uh, so much at the worried. And, and yet, you know, what you hear in the media you know, oh, people are not going to vote or, oh, are women really concerned over the loss of Roe v. Wade? And, you know, that case affects the whole nation. It certainly affects over half the population. We know the majority of the population, are they really going to be concerned when Baki is overturned for affirmative action, uh, which will happen probably next spring? You know, they'll release that decision and that'll have profound implications for 
for you know all of us, people of color and, and others in the country. So uh, it, it is um, a scary situation uh, th that we're in. And I had this word here, scary, which is smaller than worried, <laughs> but right. uh, it's up there. You know, I see piss. I see piss too. Piss to the <laughs> highest level of my pissivity. <laughs> hey, Mayor, you know this can be channeled. Even worry and scared can be channeled for good. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. You know, and you know, you know, you know. Again, everything is not hunky dory all the time, Doctor. Right. I think we have to be realistic about this and 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 understand the gravity of this moment. You know, it's not over to the fat lady sing, although she has she is clear in her throat, right? I just want y'all to know that, right? All right, so so uh, let let let's uh let let's let's bring some more people. No, 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 Meg, Meg, gonna do gonna do the public health uh minute now, so we can get that, uh, and then I'm gonna bring on everybody in, and we're gonna abbreviate that and and go through that quickly, Meg. Okay, thank you so much, Meg. Meg Jordan, our our uh, uh tech tech manager, well, she, she, she bring her up, snap her up, snap her up, and stuff. <laughs> go ahead, Meg. The public health minute. Good evening, everybody. Um, to bring us back to COVID very briefly, um, I wanted to talk to you this evening about the numbers. So in the past two years, 97.3 million people have gotten COVID. That is 235,000 in the past two weeks. Um, 1,066,000 people have died from COVID-19. That is 6,000 in the past two weeks. Um, 226 million Americans have gotten it, uh, their first two shots of Pfizer or Moderna, or they've gotten the J&J, &J, and that's um, not, not as many uh, in the past two weeks. And then 22.8 million people have gotten their bivalent boosters for COVID-19. Um, so let's look at the community levels. Um, they're going up. The past two shows, I've been able to tell you that the COVID numbers are going down. They are going back up. Um, we have more communities in yellow now. All of New England is pretty much yellow. And so we know for those of us in the East Coast, it is coming down. This is the spread we see. Um, there are 73 counties in the country where everyone needs to have their masks back on at all times indoors. So let's talk about how to stay safe this winter. Next, please, Maggie. Okay, where we are, I just wanna to call to your attention that kids are sick right now. There are three things going around, the flu, COVID, and a disease called RSV. It's a respiratory virus. It's like a common cold, but it can um, make a kid really sick and it means their oxygen levels drop and it can be really dangerous, right? So across the country, lots of different pediatric um, ERs, pediatric ICUs are full um, in a way that they were never during COVID. So we, this winter, wanna keep ourselves healthy, keep our kids healthy and keep um, our older folks healthy too, because um, this kills older adults. Um, so how do we do that? Next, please. Okay, so good news, you can get vaccines for two of those things. So we talked about bivalent boosters and all, um, I wanted to come back to that because bivalent, it has the original vaccine. So it's the one you've already gotten if you've gotten vaccinated plus Omicron. It's not something weird. It's just the original and they added Omicron. That's all the new bivalent booster is. Please get your flu shot. They're available pretty much everywhere. Um, and then how else do we keep ourselves safe? I wanna call back to a couple months ago, I think now we talked about how do pandemics end and one of them is sanitation. All these diseases you can get by, um, well, it's the fecal oral route by uh, touching your mouth with germs on them, right? So what do we do? I think we all know this. Next, Wash please. your hands. Wash your hands, please. <laughs> Next. 30% of people do not wash their hands. Um, and I know this is not a popular message, but 30% of people do not wash their hands. Next, please, Maggie. And... 
we have known that washing your hands matters since 1846. Um, this story, actually, we were just talking about Roe v. Wade, um, and it, it's an interesting tie-in because the way that we figured out that washing your hands is important was there were two different clinics. Um, the, a Hungarian doctor figured this out. There were two places women were giving birth. And in one of them, they were dying a lot more frequently and women did not want to go there. They would rather have birth, like give birth in the street than go to this clinic because so many women died there. And so this doctor said, what's happening? And he compared the two clinics. One of them, the one where people were dying, actually had more doctors and they were doing autopsies there. The clinic where people were not dying was a clinic full of midwives where they were not doing autopsies. And so in that clinic with the doctors, they were doing an autopsy on a woman who died and then immediately going into the next room and doing a delivery Oof. and not washing their hands in between. This is how we learned that washing hands saves lives. So this winter, I want you to remember three things and teach your family three things. Cough into your elbow so you're not spitting disease into other people's faces. Wash your hands and wear a mask. I hope you all stay safe and healthy as we go into Thanksgiving. Thank you, Meg. Another powerful. Let's give this snapper up. Come on man. now. Did she put it where everybody can get it? That's where the cows can get it. There, <laughs> you know, uh, you know what? And, and it's so simple. Wash your hands. I mean, come on. That's 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 simple. We, we're going to bring some folk, some folk up. Uh, we 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 see. I'm I'm going to bring up. Uh, let me let me bring up uh, uh, Dr. Ritter and Sandra. And uh, I, I I hope that uh, 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 Gregory, uh, you going to hang out with us. Uh, you going to come up and, and hang out with us. Fine. OK, we got uh, uh, we're going to bring him up uh, right afterwards. Hey, Dr. Ritter, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, y'all. This has been very sobering for me, but it actually is very therapeutic because I've been hiding all this fear and anxiety and pretending to be stronger than what I am. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's um, it's an interesting time in our lives. And to get out the vote, I think, is is it seems so normal. Mm -hmm. Right. It seems so like, oh, we've done that before and it didn't work. But historically wise, you know, if we um, stop voting, look what happened. You know, I personally now have the ability of being arrested if I go to some states in this union. I mean, I, I'm, I'm from Wisconsin originally. I live in Maryland now. Mm -hmm. Maryland is a sanctuary state. I'm an OB that, you know, OBGYN. So I do my work and take care of my women. But if I went to my home state of Wisconsin, I could technically be thrown in jail and and be a and that as a crime you know for what i do what i do is science based but the law is not science based so um my profession has not really created an outrage over this they're like oh it's a it's a state thing and maryland's a sanctuary state so we're all right right but personally if i go home and visit my family and get thrown in jail i can't vote mm can't vote if I get in jail. So it's a really an oppression on multiple levels for the vulnerable. And who are the most vulnerable? <laughs> yeah. You know, women and children, right? So uh, it's just, it's, um, what did you call it, uh, Dr. T? It's by design. So, by you know, design. It's, it's, it's for the most, the most vulnerable first, and then it'll come and get you know, everyone else is a tracks up the line. So yeah, got to get out to get out the vote. You know, yeah, do true. the education in the barbershops and salons, because back in the day, those were places where we shared information and, 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 and consolidated our voices. You know, it, you know, if it's one thing that you did and, and it crystallized with me, uh, Dr. Ritter, is this, uh, there is nothing again that politics does not touch and can be very direct to you, wherever you are, in whatever profession uh, you, you uh, hold, right? Uh, Sandra Jinx, thanks so much, Dr. Ritter. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Dr. Ritter, Dr. Ritter is, is our resident OBGYN uh, <laughs> doctor, but she's been with us from the beginning. So she's regular, she's, she's part of us. So, so you're meeting 
her, some of you meeting her for the first time, but she's part of us. Uh, Sandra Jenkins, um, uh, 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 she's a mental health specialist. <laughs> she's, she's the, <laughs> she, but she's got all, all these, oh. you know, uh, public health person, you know, she, <laughs> she, she's, she's an astronaut. Uh, <laughs> well, thank hey, you. Good, hey, good. Thank you. What's Karen. going on? Oh, gosh, a, a nervous wreck. A yeah. nervous wreck here in Pennsylvania. You know, Pennsylvania is a battleground state. Right wow. Now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it is, I, I would say, one of the most um, critical elections ever here in the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to not look at this in regards to party or color, meaning red or blue, purple, or whatever color, pink, that you see on television, what we have to understand that we are voting for our fundamental rights. It's so important to really turn out the vote here in Pennsylvania that it is just one of the most um, daunting, you know, um, probably I would say daunting times that I could say um, here because Philadelphia is our major city and we know all that it's going on in the city of Philadelphia. So whatever we can do to really put in the hearts and minds of people to feel safe, to get out to the polls and to get up and get mobilized, that is what it takes for us to heal our democracy. Our democracy is our voice. Yes. It's voice. And, and that's what it is. It's the people who makes the choices, not the candidate. Right. The candidate is the face that we expect to be in the forefront. However, if we get under those candidates and support what we believe in and what our rights are, that is the whole gist of what it is. And we, the people, we, the people are the ones that really make the decisions in our government. Yeah. Sandra Jenkins for governor. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, you know, you, 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 you said it best. Uh, this is critical. And, and when it comes to, you know, um, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, I mean, that's that's critical. I mean, all, every place is critical. Mm -hmm. There is no place that's not. But that's that's a really uh, that that's that's one of those uh, critical points. I bring up Gregory Rudrick uh, uh, for uh, from Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta Barber Institute. Hey, man, what's going all on? Right, all right. All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome. hello. How's everyone doing? Hi, uh, hi. Good, man. Uh, man. Do first you know of all, we I talked guess. about we spitting out here. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's great. A lot of good information here. Um, I'm uh, I was host. I'm hosted by uh, Mr. Uh, Andre Russell. That's my mentor there. So it's an honor and a pleasure to be on this panel with all you just listen to all this encouraging information. And I'm down here with Miss Stacy Abrams. <laughs> so we are trying to, you know, do all that we can to make sure everybody's in the right place. And uh, my school is actually located in the Martin Luther King Historic District. So uh, where civil rights started. So it's real important, you know, walking those streets every day with all those historical footprints and everything that, you know, we maintain the integrity and also the, you know, the, the blood, sweat and tears and the sacrifice that were made, you know, for us to even have this panel or even have this discussion. You know, I'm very grateful and I'm humble about that. Yeah. Thank you, man. So uh, I want you to not make yourself a stranger, man. You, you part of the family. <laughs> and if I, if, I've been if, trying to get in. <laughs> if, I, if, Uncle, if Uncle Andre, Russell brought you in, and you know he's he, you know he's he's part of the team. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Come on up. Uh, what's going on, man? How you doing? Not much. How about you guys? Yeah, man. You know, you know. Let me tell you something. Two, uh, you got a Senate race and a go gubernatorial race in 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 Georgia, man. That's going to be pivotal too, you know. And uh, so we got to get people. I don't know what are people. Do you, you know, with the people coming through, Andre, are you seeing a sense of urgency? Are people kind of passe? They what 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 you what's your take on it? Well, I, I'm seeing a lot of urgency, uh, and and the the problem I have, and, and I didn't recognize it, 
is something I thought was accomplished a long time ago when we had voters and and register, registering voters and teaching them how to vote. Uh, people were coming out, or I had a couple of buses. People were coming out saying, <clears throat> I didn't vote for this guy uh, because it, it said he was incompetent. Mm. And uh, I said, incompetent, what do you mean? Well, it's right on the thing that says he's incompetent. So what I'm looking at is, is incumbent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, educators out there. And I'm thinking that's a good one, man. Because yeah, wow. I've been doing this, I've been doing this for years. And and I'm hearing this. And I said, I, you know, it's one of those things where I say, I thought we were past this. I really thought we were past that part. That, that's one of the drop the mic moments. Wow. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 Mayor and my friends in Atlanta, when I was on the civil rights tour, I'm in a museum and they have an entire exhibit on the poll taxes. We literally saw the jars full of the marbles that people had to guess how many marbles were there. We saw all the examples of how they were getting us not to vote. And now what you just said, mm-hmm. it's as easy as not being able to, to mm-hmm. know incumbent from incompetent. Yeah, wow. Mm-hmm. Your mind is a terrible yeah. thing to waste. I tell you that. I'm telling you, I mean, I thought, I thought, I thought we were very so far past that part where, and I'm not talking about just some of the elderly or the seniors. Some of the younger people uh, uh, coming out with having the conversation about there's so many incompetent people right now. So we, uh, we I just voted for the other person, and right. I said, "Well, oh my God!" I, but that may, that may, be, you know, I don't know. That may be a good something too. I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, let's let's go bring bring Dorothy Rindles. Let's go to uh, uh, Pine Bluffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it right, man. You know, I wasn't gonna say Little Rock. <laughs> now, she, you know, I, 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 I have, I have been spanked once. You know, you, you, you know, how you do it once, do it once, shame on on you. Do it twice, shame on me. Right. So I won't do it twice. Hey, hey, uh, Dorothy Reynolds, how you doing? What's happening up in Pine Bluff? Tell me what's your thoughts. What we got to get folk voting, and we got eight minutes, so I'm trying to get so many people in. He's uh, on mute. Stacy, Stacy, you on deck. Go ahead. Unmute, Dorothy. Okay. Can you hear me now? You're good. You're you good. Go ahead. Okay. Well, in the past years, politicians have come through the salon and the barbershop and introduced themselves and left flyers and information. But prediction, we've seen very few people. As a matter of fact, we were talking today. Uh, some of the information about um, who is running for different positions, who the politicians are, are not very well known, except through the paper, that through the uh, Arkansas Gazette, because uh, the politicians are not very visible this time. So I don't know if they're taking, I think as someone said, they're just taking us for granted. Um, in the barbershops is where you can guarantee you're going to see a group of people. Mm-hmm. And if you don't come there and leave information or get to, get to meet the um, voters, then where else are you going to go? Because churches have stopped allowing politicians to come and take the, up time in the church anymore. So I think that I also feel that the voter uh, politicians are taking voters for granted. Yeah. So, so Dorothy, can, let me ask you a question. What if you were, uh, if those politicians said, we're reaching even more of you because we're reaching you through your social media. We're reaching you on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram. What do you say to that? Well, everybody, <clears throat> there are a lot of people that are looking at Instagram and um, TikTok and what have you, but there are a lot of other people that are not. And also, I I believe that um, a person can put a face to you if you, if I see your face. Right. But if I'm looking at social media, it's so much out there on social media, it wouldn't be effective for me. Right. And I and- I don't I don't think it would be for anybody else my age either. Right. They, okay. they, as, they, as they say, I ain't studying you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, let's bring up Stacey Ruffin. Uh, you know, she she's over there gloating because uh, Philadelphia, 
Because Philadelphia is doing all good. They got, you know, baseball. They, winning they winning baseball, <laughs> hot dog. They ain't <laughs> playing nobody. <laughs> <Some> hockey. <laughs> you know, you know, they just doing everything. But you know, I like Stacy is a super fan. Yeah, but she she is. Now, now you got to give her props, man. Come she she believes in something. She put it all up there. Uh, uh, Stacy, uh, you know, you know, you know, again, everything is right now. I know you all are in the throes of y'all winning stuff, you know, but right now winning and losing could very well be the democracy or not. How important okay. is voting? Just, yes. just a, a short, short answer. There. And I was just uh, listening to Mike. Um, it's funny because I have a salon, spa, fitness center, and a lot of things. And I haven't seen one person mm -hmm. running come to even bring out a flyer. We don't have any pamphlets. We don't have anything in our salon, barbershop, or our spa. Not one person wow. came. So, you know, and so we have so many, you know, like it's 3,000 people in the complex where I'm at. So I'm like, well, you know, I just thought about it when he said it. I'm saying, well, you know what? Didn't nobody come here either. So I'm really like lost. Um, I, I'm, it saddens me. I vote. I talk about voting, but it's like whatever. And you know, that's what it is. It's you know, sad. That's, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, I don't, is, is it ignorance? Because, you know, you, you know, some, I think Dorothy said it best, you know, when you can put a face to something, right? When, mm -hmm. when, you, when I can shake your hand or, or interact with you, then, then I, you become, it becomes more personal than, mm -hmm. than just me seeing you on a television or in a TikTok on a screen or something. But when mm -hmm. you come to me, then that shows respect, right? When yes. you ask me, for for your for my support for you right but also yeah. you know and i think it's important and and i you know we got we got six we got four <laughs> minutes to go so we don't have much time to do this but it's important and and i want dr prim to help me out with this are we doing any assessment on what people do when they get in office do we have a, a report card i mean you you the person that know about report cards and and and, and your report card is what you've done the best indicator of what a person would do is what a person has done. Is that right? Yes, exactly. So two things really quick. One thing is just in case I, I don't get to it is all those words we saw in the word cloud. Yes. The, get behind it is leverage. So all that worry and concern, we need to use that to get people out, to really get them out to vote. Say, if you scared, show me you scared. And mm -hmm. the way that you show me that you're scared is you get out and you vote. In terms of the report card, I think it's incumbent upon those organizations that we talked about before, that if you're giving people endorsement, then it's your responsibility to come back and report to the constituents and say, hey, we endorse these people and this is what they've done. It, just like you have midterm elections, you ought to have midterm kind of report cards to say, here's what your folks have done. We endorse them and here's what they've done. Or here's what they have not done. You know, Mayor, we, we've got people out in social media who sometimes are in the room here. we got Michelle Lamb out there. They're all listening to us right now. And, and I'm hoping that we, we are forming a strategy right here so we can take that playbook that Val's been talking about and, and go to Michelle Lamb in Cincinnati. Go, right. to, go to Pine Bluffs. Go to all where we have the Warriors and begin doing our work. Mm -hmm. right. It's right. back to basics. And right. isn't it about trust when somebody comes in and literally looks you in the eye and shakes your hand? You used to be able to tell a lot about a person with a handshake. I don't think you can do this just by polling and social media. You got to get out in the street. And no doubt about it. Um, let, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a, a quick round robin of, 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 of my, my, my guests. I'm going to start with you, uh, Val Davis. You know, we, we absolutely adore you. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> up. Give us, give us, give Come us, on now. give us some last words. I mean, we, 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 we got a very short. We, okay. We, we I'll, I'll hit y'all up in the, in the chat. So just read the chat. I'm going to say this. Okay. Change the narrative in the conversation. It's not about no one's here to make sure we don't feel taken for granted. No one's here to come and say, oh, let's visit the Black people because they're there. That's not the deal for us in this country. The country it, that has said from the beginning, give us everything you have for nothing in return. That's the formula. 
So if you're, you have to know your oppressor, you have to know who has power and play their game. Money and votes. We vote because we, this is the only place we're equal at the ballot box. Stop this conversation about who hasn't come and, oh, well, they, they take us for granted. Yes, they do, because we, we take ourselves for granted. No, girl, I, you, know, you know what? I'm going to read this. No one is coming to our communities because they don't believe we have power. No, they don't. We vote because we decide we want to use our power uh, in the only place where we are all equal, the ballot, the ballot box. box. All right. I just want to make go. sure that Boom. we got that. You know, you know, drop the mic in and bow, David. Uh, you Mayor, know, you, you better do the round robin. You got to yeah, take I, I, I better do it. I got to I got to do it. But, you know, yeah, hey, man, I, I can't go nowhere. Can't go nowhere without Dean Wing uh, giving on, me, Dean. spitting some knowledge out of, on us. Go with your friends, your relatives, your students, your co-workers, your not so good friends, <laughs> your loved ones, and get out there this Tuesday because our literal future as a nation is dependent upon it. All right. Thanks, thanks Dean. Uh, Russ, man, you know, man, we got, you know, what, 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 what's up? Well, you know, um, President Obama was here recently in Michigan at one of our high schools. And one of the folks that was in the um, audience started to heckle. And they started to boo him. And what the president said, don't boo, vote. Right. So that's what my, that's what, don't worry about any other, other issues or problems or concerns. Just go do your civic duty. All right. Vote. I, I know, I know. Right. That, I something, but yeah. doc, Dr. Prim, I can't, I, I got to give you just one word to say something, whatever you're going to say. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to wrap up and not wrap my brother into it. You know. <laughs> Look, everyone that's under the sound of my voice, you got to take this as if your life depends on it because it does. So don't let, you know, the vote go by. Don't let this election go by without doing whatever you can do to make sure that not only is your vote counted, but someone else's vote is counted as well. But our lives depend on it. And we're depending on each other to do that. All if right. we, we've got a chance. Okay. Good. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Dr. T, love you, man. Thank you so much for all we do, uh, for all we do here, man. Love you so much. Um, you know, for 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 all of the uh, just incredible guests we had today on the cutting edge, just a powerful conversation for all of our uh, uh, all of our family uh, all over the country, uh, in barbershops and salons around the country. Thank you for what you do, both seen and unseen. You know, I I, I am uh, in agreement with each of you. Uh, that this is a pivotal point. This is a uh, a watershed moment. This is a salient moment by which we will decide whether or not uh, this whole experiment, this pluralistic society that we uh, espouse, at least in theory, uh, will come to fruition. And it's not going to happen without you participating. This is not a spectator sport. Uh, we must uh, engage in the process. And as Val Davis said, uh, we got the power. Uh, that, that's, that's what power is. We got the power. We, we don't need to ask people for anything. P power succeeds nothing without a demand. Never has. And it never will. Never will. As always, I'd like to leave you with these two words. Remember that I love you with the perfect love. But more importantly, remember this. You got the power. Right. And of course, thank you for joining with us on this segment of The Cutting Edge. We'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Make Give sure call, you protect Greg. yourself. And also, go and vote. Go and vote. Move on.